And this is one of my favorite verses when it comes to relationships and just marriage and just any, any relationships really, because I think it's all about communication. Because we, we are not God, right? We can't read each other's hearts. We can't, we can't know what, what e each other is thinking. And women, I think, are especially guilty of this because they just expect their husband to know what they're thinking and they get upset when, when they don't know what they're thinking, right? And it's just about having, real, like I said, realistic expectations, right? Biblical expectations. Can you really expect that from your husband? If you're not willing to open up and tell him what the problem is, is he just meant to be a mind reader? You know, and it, it works both ways. So it says here, can two walk together except they be agreed? And, you know, it's a, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a question you ask, but you're not expecting an answer. Rhetorical? rhetorical? Yeah, it's a rhetorical question because the answer is no when we read the, the chapter. That you cannot walk together unless you're agreed. So in the context of dating and finding a spouse, you know, this is really important. Open and proactive communication is very important. Open meaning that you're not hiding things from each other. You're trying to talk and trying to learn one another. Proactive meaning that you proactively bring things up as opposed to waiting for the other person to bring it up or waiting for the other person to ask you the question. If there's something that you're concerned about or something that you want to talk about, bring it up. You know, and if the person can't handle what you're bringing up, you just kind of think, are they really serious about this? You know, are they serious about having a uh, successful relationship if they don't want to discuss the issues surrounding a relationship? Do you know what I mean? So uh, bring these things up and talk about them. Now, especially when it comes to dating, I think it... You know, talking is very important because the, there's only really two ways a, a dating relationship can progress, right? It can, pro, it can progress philosophically, which is through talking, or it can progress emotionally and physically, can't it? And, and the problem is, is if you're dating somebody and you're, you're spending a lot of time with them and you are not discussing things openly and proactively, chances are what is progressing is the emotional and the physical side. And what you want to do with dating is you want the philosophical side to progress faster than the emotional and physical side. Because if you don't get along philosophically, then you can end it and not have the heartbreak that is usually associated with dating. So, especially for guys, I think as guys should be the leader in any dating relationship, you ought to take the lead and you ought to spark conversation and bring up things and talk about it. It's the same when you're married. You know, like if you know something is bothering your wife, I think it's up to you, men, to, to, to deal with it and bring it up and talk with her because women, uh, I, I don't believe it's, it's necessarily their responsibility to make sure that, that, um, that, that relationship is going well. They do play a part, but I think if it's not going well, the, the man has to step up and, and fix it. So talk and move the relationship forward philosophically rather than emotionally. I think someone that's serious will appreciate it. Um, and because, you know, lust is blinding, isn't it? Like if you're so invested emotionally and physically, you're going to overlook a lot of the philosophical differences that are much more important when it comes to having a successful marriage. So I've, got so, I've listed just some ideas here and I'll just, I'll just read them to you. Some ideas of things to talk about, and they're not necessarily listed in order of importance, but some of the things that Elizabeth and I talked about before we got married. You know, we talked about religious beliefs, our religious views and doctrines, and that's like the major one, right? Because generally everything we believe stems from our religious views. So you talk about everything to do with that, a lot of doctrine, you know, eternal security, salvation, all, everything, right? Whatever you want to talk about. Um, church, you know, what, what, sort of, what church you want to, to be a part of and what sort of church you want to go to. Uh, your family, you know, siblings, things like that. You know, future family plans about children. Uh, gender roles, you know, what, what you believe uh, a husband should do, what you believe a wife should do, what you believe a, a father and a mother should do. Gender roles. Uh, clothing standards, you know, is there, is there a way that you expect your wife to dress? You know, it's something good to talk about um, when, when, you're, when you're dating. And, you know, obviously some of these topics are a bit, you know, heavier than others. So I'm not saying you just drop the bomb on on the very first date. But, you know, as you get to know one another, you know, it just takes a bit of wisdom. You know, as you get to know each other and the guards start coming down, you start talking about things that are more personal, more, more in-depth. But you want to at least cover all these things before you make the decision to get married. Uh, you know, children, you know, when you want to have children, how many children you want to have, how you plan to educate them or school them, how you plan to discipline them. 
because this is often a cause of strife in families. You know, one parent wants to spank and one parent believes in timeouts. And then there's a, like strife there. And then children play parents one against the other. So you need to be on the same page there. Uh, oh, I listed church twice. That's how important it is. I listed it twice. Church. Um, past relationships. That, that's important too. You know, past relationships. Be open about that. You know, things that you've done in the past. Uh, mistakes that you've done in the past. You know, whether or not you're pure or not, I think are very important. Uh, past relationships, struggles that you struggle with, you know, what if scenarios? You know, like one, this is some of the things that Elizabeth and I talked about. You know, like what if I became a cripple? How would you handle that? You know, would you leave me? What, what if I was, became mentally capacitated? What if I died? What would you do? You know, should you marry somebody else? I tell Elizabeth, if I die, marry somebody else, you know, so that somebody can take care of you. Um, you know, what if situations? You know, what if, what if I'm unfaithful? You know, there are different views on that, and I'll talk about that at another sermon. But, you know, what if I've been unfaithful? How would you handle it? What would you do? You know, what if scenarios, I think, are good things to talk about. Finances, you know, should you have the same bank account? You know, should you share bank accounts? Should you have separate bank accounts? How are you going to run the money when you're, when you're married? Work, do you want your wife to work or not? Or is she going to quit work once you get married? Or is she going to quit work once you have your first child? Or, you know, things like that. Uh, goals that you have in life. Where, where, what do you want to achieve in life? Is the woman willing to give up some goals in order to follow the goals of the man? Um, where you want to live? Is your wife going to take on your surname? Is that important to you? Is she going to have it hyphenated? Or is she going to keep her maiden name? This is important to some people. It's important to me. I think it's biblical for a, a woman to be called by the name of the husband. Uh, wife's surname. Social media and emails. I know some couples, you know, once they get married, they have shared email accounts, shared social media accounts. You know, discuss these things. You know, these might seem small, but if they're small, then talk about them. Then that way, you know, if they're small, there's no point having strife about them once you're married. If you've discussed them beforehand um, and anything in your background. So there are some ideas. It's not an all-inclusive list. But that, to give you an idea of what I mean when I say talk about things, I mean talk about things. Talk about everything. Bring them up and talk about them. You know, and I don't, I don't recommend keeping secrets from the person that you're going to marry. You know, I don't necessarily think that that nullifies your vow, like if you haven't told them something. And they, you know, there are things that I've found out about Elizabeth after we've been married. Um, depending on the seriousness of the issue, I mean, if the issue is really serious, then it's probably better that you bring it up before you're married. It may not necessarily mean you're not married after you get married, but it just means that your relationship might not start off on the right foot. I mean, you know, let's say, you know, you're married for like a couple of months and then something that was very important to you gets brought up and you're like, why didn't you tell me before we got married? And you just feel like, what else are you keeping from me? So this is why it's all about being proactive and being open with communication because it's very, it's very hard to build trust, isn't it? But it's very easy to lose it. And that's why with communication, when something like that happens, you want your marriage and your relationship to be really strong, and that's why you don't want to keep things from one another. Now, the one exception, I think, you know, when it comes to nullifying your marriage, and um, it, this is just a thought that I just wanted to share with you. I do think, actually, if you are impure and you get married under the pretense that you are pure, I do believe that the, the Bible does give grounds to, to break that marriage, because in Deuteronomy 22, it talks about a virgin not being pure, and she's married under the pretense that she is pure. And if she's found to not be pure, she's stoned to death. You know, so I would say in our day and age, if a woman is stoned to death for something that she's done, and it sounds like that that is the case, you know, to me, that would be grounds to break that, break that relationship. But whether that applies to the man or not, you know, if a man marries, I don't know what man would do this, but if he marries under the pretense that he's a virgin and is not, can the woman put away her husband? I haven't decided there, but, you know, something that, Happy for you guys to discuss, but that's Deuteronomy 22, and it talks about the virgin being married, and then the guy says, you know, I came into this uh, woman and found her not a maid, and then they have to spread the cloth, which I think is, my wife tells me that it might be a cloth, because when, you know, when a woman loses her virginity, she can bleed, and that cloth can show, like, you know, she was a virgin um, on the night she got married. So just a thought there, so talk about everything, I think it's very important. Um... 1 Peter 5, 5 says here, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So just a principle there, when it comes to communication, you need to stay humble, right? You need to be humble enough to let that guard down in order to chat. 
And I always tell guys, you know, you, you ought to let that guard down first. Don't expect the woman to let the guard down. You, you open up. And I think as you open up, I think females will start to feel more comfortable to open up. But if you're humble with one another and you're not proud, then you'll talk about these things and not think like, you know, why is he bringing this up? You know, nobody asks me these things. You know, it's none of your business. Well, if you're going to get married, it is, it is his business. You know what I mean? So you can't have that frame of mind that it's none of your business when it, it is. So talk about those things. 